the capability of the Philippine Navy to build its own major warship vessels may no longer be a far-fetched idea. In fact, it might happen next year, as the Philippine Navy eyes foreign shipbuilders to acquire additional multi-mission vessels, including warships and submarines. As part of its long-term modernization program, a local company wants to get a share of the country's defense spending on maritime assets. But it admits the ambitious plan could not be carried out without challenges. In terms of the ability to build vessels, the Philippines can actually do a lot. The country has some medium-sized to large-sized shipyards. A lot of the assets can potentially be built here locally. What is lacking is probably the experience and the proven track record to physically build a warship. On the upside, tapping local shipyards to build the Navy's warships can be good for the economy, particularly the labor sector. Earlier this year, the Philippine Navy's capability to build its own warships, particularly the small and hard-hitting fast-attack interdictor craft missile, FAICM, got a needed boost after Israel Shipyards Limited transferred the documents and keys of a newly refurbished shipyard to its possession. The upgraded shipyard is located at Naval Station, Pascual Ledesma in Cavite City. The newly refurbished naval shipyard will facilitate the local construction of the three FAICM vessels, which will form part of the fleet of Philippine Navy's Acero-class patrol gunboats. Its formal handover ceremony was lined up last May as part of the Navy's pre-anniversary activities. This is a significant milestone for the shipbuilding capability of the Philippine Navy and at the time boosts the country's self-reliant defense posture program, one of the current 10-point agenda of the Department of National Defense. The 32-meter-long fast-attack interdictor craft missiles are high-speed vessels equipped with quick interceptability, remote-stabilized weapons, and short-range missiles that are capable of delivering precision strikes against larger hostiles and high-value targets on land and sea. Four of the fast-attack interdictor craft missiles will be armed with non-line-of-sight missiles with pinpoint accuracy and a range of 25 kilometers while the other five will be armed with Typhoon-mounted 30mm main cannons and .50 caliber heavy machine guns. The acquisition of these fast-attack interdictor craft missile is among the 2019 projects approved by former President Rodrigo Duterte's under the Horizon 2 list of the armed forces of the Philippines Modernization Program. The Philippines can develop its own shipbuilding industry to ensure the military will have the capability to secure the country and its territorial waters from piracy, terrorism and encroachment. Philippines Shipbuilding Industry Since 2008, the Philippines notched fourth in the rank of the largest shipbuilding nations of the world following South Korea, China and Japan. The country has covered 1.6% of the world's ship production with more than 100 ships produced per year and roughly 5,900 gross tonnages overall. As of 2021, there are 118 registered shipyards, 17 of which belong to the medium-large scale category or classification. These yards are scattered along with the country's three main island groups of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. On the other hand, the overwhelming coastline and seabed characteristics make it accommodating for large vessels as well. In addition, the country's anchorage area, ports, and wharf facilities have been providing the safest shelter for vessels against strong typhoons. The biggest shipyard to ever operate in the country is the Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction Philippines. Located in Subic, north of Manila, and established in 2006 with about 300 hectares, the yard has a size of 35,000 workers. Unfortunately, the company filed bankruptcy on 8 January 2019 due to failure to pay its responsibilities to an outstanding debt of $1.3 billion on mixed $900 million credits from South Korean lenders and $400 million combined Filipino bank loans causing the enormous shipyard to cease operation. As of 2022, the company is announced to be sold to Cerberus Management Capital, a United States equity investment company in cooperation with their settled operator, Aguila Naval Incorporated. The said company will cover Hanjin's Philippine bank debts to take over the five-decade long-term facility lease. It is hoped to restart by involving 3,000 job openings during the acquisition. Sunayshi Heavy Industries Incorporated is a shipbuilding, ship repair and manufacturing outfittings for ships and vessels located in an industrialized park in Balamban, Cebu in the central Philippines. The industrial park is anchored on the 283-hectare economic zone that currently hosts 11 medium to heavy industry locators, including the world's biggest shipbuilding firms in the world such as Sunayshi and Austal of Australia. This makes Balamban, 
located 52.8 kilometers west of Cebu City, the shipbuilding capital of the Philippines. The industry of shipbuilding and ship repair is barred on a globally competitive standard which will further harden the world-class services the country of the Philippines has to offer. The ship repair and shipbuilding business is set to a full throttle to be sought ahead by more foreign and local clients. Philippines Armed Forces Modernization Plan The third phase of the military's 15-year modernization plan, dubbed Horizon 3, includes the acquisition of multi-role fighter jets, radars, two additional Jose Rizal-class frigates, missile systems, helicopters and the country's first submarine fleet. Initial plans also included acquiring additional BrahMos missiles and high-mobility artillery rocket systems for the Army for coastal defense. The modernization effort began in 2013, but budget limitations have delayed progress. Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro told lawmakers last month that 10% of Horizon 1, meant to take place from 2013 to 2018, and about 53% of Horizon 2, scheduled from 2018 to 2022, are complete. However, in response to clashes between China and the Philippines in recent weeks, Manila is speeding up its acquisition plans, with the legislature earmarking 45 billion pesos in defense spending for 2024. Senators have relayed support in passing supplemental budgets for intelligence and materiel acquisitions related to South China Sea operations. Last week, the Defense Department ordered three C-130J-30 Super Hercules tactical airlifters for delivery in 2026, according to a news release from Lockheed Martin. The Philippines is also expecting to receive two BrahMos missile units in December from India, more Acero-class gunboats next year under a deal with Israel, two new landing dock platforms from Indonesia next year, two corvettes from South Korea around the 2025 and 2026 time frame, and six offshore patrol vessels also from South Korea in 2028. Horizon 3 requires 500 billion pesos spread out over the next six years, but it is unclear how the government intends to finance the program. However, some countries have offered assistance. For example, France pitched its Scorpion diesel electric submarines as early as 2019, and its proposal includes helping the Philippines Navy develop its base in Zambales. Others bidding to supply the Philippines with submarines include Spain, which submitted a $1.7 billion offer to supply two S-80-class submarine, and South Korea's Hanwha Ocean, which updated its proposal last month for two Jongbogo-3 diesel electric submarines. While the Philippine military has yet to release its final plans for Horizon 3, the realignment will include less but more potent assets and platforms, according to Bronner. The material will align with the country's forward defense strategy, where threats are pushed as further away as possible, Bronner said, adding that the military's goal is to immediately deploy fighter jets and other assets after reported encounters with Chinese vessels. According to the country's new territorial defense strategy released last week, the Philippines is placing particular importance on islands it claims as its own, including what the government calls the West Philippine Sea Group of Islands as part of Philippines' continental shelves. The Philippine military is realigning its modernization program to strengthen territorial and coastal defense amid escalating tension with China. Philippine Army Chief of Staff General Romeo Bronner said changes are geared toward protecting the country's territories in the South China Sea, particularly Thetu Island. That landmass, called Pag Hasa Island by the Philippines, is home to more than 400 Filipinos. It is also one of several disputed islands in the South China Sea. A delegation from the Department of National Defense visited two major South Korean defense equipment manufacturers amid growing calls from various sectors to expedite the ongoing armed forces of the Philippines' modernization program in response to tensions in the West Philippine Sea. Hanwha Ocean is offering their Jongbogo IIPN submarine for the proposed submarine project of the AFP modernization program for Horizon 3, which is scheduled from 2023 to 2028. The project has a planned budget of 110 billion Philippine pesos and is geared toward the acquisition of two modern diesel electric submarines. The Philippines gears up for its maiden submarine acquisition amid Southeast Asian naval race. The Southeast Asia nation has long been engaged in a confrontation with China over the control of vast swaths of the South China Sea. The country has finally committed to acquiring its first ever submarine. The decision stems from the increasing Chinese aggression in the West Philippine Sea, taking part in the wider South China Sea, which China claims entirely. The French naval group, which has emerged as one of the top contenders, 
has offered its Scorpion submarines to turn the Philippines Navy into a major force. The Southeast Asian country also has an offer from South Korean DSME, Russia's Sevmash, and Turkey to build submarines for its navy. The Philippines is not only looking to acquire a submarine but also to develop its own manufacturing capacity within the country. Along with the building capability, the country is also looking at training proficiencies. This makes it imperative for the Philippines, which has one of the world's largest coastlines, to strengthen its navy. Procuring a submarine can be a deterrent, underscoring the Philippines' ability and determination to protect its territorial sovereignty. Reports inform that the Philippine Navy has already sent personnel to France for training before procuring the submarines. This suggests that the naval group might be in the pole position with its Scorpion-class diesel-electric submarines on offer. Brazil, Chile, India and Malaysia have also chosen the submarines. The Philippine Navy has started working towards building its submarine force since 2015 by sending its personnel to train at the DCI's facility in France. A crew of 31 sailors will operate the Scorpion SSK that the naval group is offering the Philippine Navy and will have an endurance of 80 days at sea. This variant is similar to those operated by Brazil. It will also have six torpedo tubes and can deploy a total of 18 munitions. It will be armed with SM-39 Exocet anti-ship missiles and F-21 heavyweight torpedoes. Naval Group also highlighted the use of Scorpion in other roles, such as intelligence gathering, special forces operations, and mine laying. Despite the intent to procure, the submarine plan had been in limbo due to the small defense budget of the country. The estimated budget for procuring two submarines has been pegged at 70 to 100 billion Philippine pesos or 1.3 to 1.8 billion United States dollars. The procurement is part of the Philippines Navy's Horizon 3 modernization plan from 2023 to 2028. Once the deal is finalized, it will take at least five years for the first of the submarines to enter the fleet. While the naval group is not offering to build the submarines in the island country, it is offering to train its personnel for four years. The watchers of the South China Sea have welcomed the development and say that the Philippines will be better off by allying with like-minded countries and building internal capability. Going back and forth on its aspirations to build a submarine fleet, the Archipelagic country has finally consented to go ahead with its Navy modernization plans. When asked how long it would take the first submarine to enter the Philippine Navy service, the naval group stated that the first boat would require five years to be built and an additional year of qualifications at sea before being transferred to the Philippine Navy. In total, it would take six years for the first Scorpina to enter service. In other words, if procured under Horizon 3, from 2023 to 2028 period, the first SSK would arrive between 2029 and 2034. David vs. Goliath, as the Philippines prepares to stand up to China. In 2016 an international tribunal squashed any justification China might have had for harassing ships passing by Mischief Reef, its controversial artificial islands, blocking Filipino fishermen from areas like Scarborough Shoal, or interfering with other nations' attempts to explore for oil off their coasts. Despite the ruling, China wrestled control of Scarborough Shoal, a coral reef around 140 miles from the Philippine coastline, and has maintained a constant Chinese Coast Guard presence there. For a long time, the Philippines hoped that its muted response would help in a peaceful resolution of the disputes. But with time, China's aggression in the region has only increased, and it has started employing gray zone operations, making it difficult to counter Beijing's strong arm tactics. The island country is also leveraging its position to form a strategic alliance with foreign powers in the Indo-Pacific. The Philippines modernized its 1951 mutual defense treaty with the U.S. to include their shared resolve to defend against armed attacks on their aircraft, public vessels, and armed forces to include their respective coast guards, in the Pacific, including anywhere in the South China Sea. The U.S. and the Philippines updated the 2014 Enhanced Defense Security Cooperation Agreement earlier this year giving U.S. patrols access to four additional Philippine bases. In a show of strength, both countries conducted their biggest maritime drill in a clear message to China that the Philippines chooses to actively deter China's attempt to chip away at its sovereignty island by island.